So bearing all this in mind, let's look at how we can make a monohybrid cross. In the pea pods, the dominant allele for colour is the green allele, which is represented by large G, and the recessive allele is the yellow allele, little g. So remember, when you have dominant and recessive alleles, the dominant one always shows itself, even if there's a recessive one present. The recessive one only creates a characteristic if all of the alleles are recessive. So if we had two pairs of chromosomes, which were GG, this is the only time we would get a yellow phenotype because the little g or the yellow gene is recessive. So they both have to be present and there's no dominant allele to cover them up. Anytime we have the presence of a dominant allele, so the, the capital G, whether that's two of them or whether it's with a recessive one, the dominant one always takes hold. So these always give rise to a green pea pod. So it can be confusing to get your head around this, just remember every gene, if there's a homologous pair of chromosomes, every gene will have two versions. If there's ever a dominant allele, that characteristic will always be the resulting characteristic. The only time you see the recessive characteristic, i.e. in this case the yellow one, there has to be just yellow or recessive genes present, no dominant genes. So pure breeding the pea pods are always going to be homozygous. So pure breeding green pods will have a capital G, capital G genotype, so two dominant alleles. And the pure breeding yellow pods will have little g, little g phenotype. So as Mendel did, he bred lots and lots of generations of green ones together until eventually they only had the green gene. So any of their offspring will always get one of those alleles. And the pure bred yellow ones will have the g, g, little g, little g, hence why they're yellow. And so they have no dominant green alleles in their genetic makeup. When a pure breeding green pea pod is crossed or mated with a pure breeding yellow pea pod, the offspring are known as the first filial or F1 generation. So what we're doing is we're taking the green pea pod, we're taking the yellow pea pod, and we're mating them together to make offspring. And the offspring are the F1 generation, the first generation, so the first set of offspring. Filial just means generation in Latin or offspring. And when we're working out this, we can use something called a Punnett square to work out what the genotypes and the phenotypes of this new F1 generation will be. So the first thing we do is we work out the parental genotypes. So here we have the two parents. The next thing you do is you work out their phenotype because that helps you to work out their genotype. So the phenotype is the characteristic as a result of the genes. So we know that this one is green and we know that these ones are the purebred yellow ones. So both purebred, this one's green, this one's yellow. From this, you can work out their genotype. So this refers to what alleles do each of these have? And remember, each one will have two possible alleles. But we know that these ones are purebred pea pods. So the pure green ones will be both green genes, both green alleles. The pure yellow one will be both recessive or both yellow genes. And then of course, when they mate together, they're going to use the gametes to fuse and make the new organism. So first write out the parental gametes. So if this one is a big G, big G, then the only gametes it can ever make are those of the big G. Whichever the um, gamete takes, whichever allele, it will always be the big G. For the yellow pea pod, it's little G, little G, so the gamete will always be little G. And remember, we always circle gametes. So these must have a circle around them. And then you put this all together into a square and you work out the offspring's possible genotypes. So put the parental gametes into the surrounding grids. So first of all, we have the green pea pod, which had gametes of either uppercase G or uppercase G. The gametes of the yellow one were little g, little g. So what you need to do now in these squares is put the gametes together, which will fuse. So this gamete is going to fuse with this one to make this offspring. This gamete fuses with that one to make that offspring. So you'll end up with four new offspring. So the offspring will either be large G fusing with this one, little g, large G fusing with this one to make large G, little g again as well. This one fusing with this one to make again, large G, little g, and again, large G and little g. So these are the possible offspring genotypes that can be made if the pure green pea pod breeds with the pure yellow pea pod. 
And then from this, of course, from the genotypes, you work out the offspring's phenotypes. So here are the original gametes again. And then, of course, we've got our different genotypes. And then what you need to do is realize which one of these would lead to which phenotype. And because they all contain the dominant allele for green, they would all form a green pea pod. So whenever you have a pure green pea pod and a yellow pea pod, you can be certain that any offspring they make will always have one of those capital G alleles and will always be green. That first generation will always be a green set of pea pods. What we can then do is look at the next generation after the first generation. So we just saw that when two different pure breeding pods are crossed, the resultant F1 or first filial generation are all heterozygous. So we just did this experiment before when every single one of them formed a green pea pod. But as you can see, because of the way the gametes were ordered, every single offspring member is going to have big G, little g. So they're all heterozygous. Remember, heterozygous means the two alleles are of different forms within that particular organism. So what we can do now is breed the offspring in that generation together to make a second generation. When two green pea pods from the F1 generation are crossed with each other, the new offspring are called the F2 generation. So we take members from the F1 generation, breed them together, and they will make new offspring, just like before. But of course, this time it's our second generation, so it's the F2 generation. Then all we do this time is use a Punnett square again to work out the genotypes and the phenotypes of the F2 generation. So it's basically the same process. First, work out the parental genotypes. So here are the parents. So we've got an F1 green pea pod and the F1 green pea pod. The phenotypes we know for both of them are green and green. And then we can work out the genotypes based on our previous square. And we know that all of them are homozygous. So this pea pod is going to be large G, little g, and so is this one. So these are the genotypes of the generation we've just made. We then need to work out what the parental gametes are going to be. So here are our F1 pea pods again, the green pea pods. We had the genotype from before. So now you should hopefully realize that we can actually have two possible gametes for each one now. We could make gametes that have the capital G, or we could make gametes that have the little g. And since this one is the same, we're going to have the same thing. So the gametes for F1 offspring could be little g or big G. You then do the same thing as we did before, and you work out the new offspring genotypes, so the F2 generation. So first put in the parental gametes. So the first one was large g, little g, as was the second one, because they were both heterozygous, remember. And now you go through again, crossing the rows and columns that match and writing out their genotypes. So the large G fusing with the large G would make double large G. The large G fusing with this little G would form a large G and a little G. This one again is G with little G. And then these two would form little G, little G, because they're both little G gametes. And then of course, from what we've just found, we can work out the offspring's phenotypes. So what we'd find is that if you look at the first offspring, this F2 offspring has double dominant for green, and so this one would always be green. This one also has a dominant gene for green. This one would also be green, as does this one. However, when you look at the last one, it only has recessive genes, and therefore it will be yellow. So in the F2 generation, there's a three quarter chance of them being green, but only a 25% chance of them being yellow. So the thing you can do now is work out the ratio of the offspring phenotypes. We have three green ones in the F2 generation to every one yellow pea pod. So you would have to also write under here, you'd have three green phenotypes to every yellow phenotype. So what this means is, in the resultant F2 generation, there are two heterozygous green pods, which are these two here. There's one homozygous green pod, which is this one that has both of the green alleles. And there's one homozygous yellow pod, where we have two copies of that recessive allele. The test cross is slightly different. The test cross is a method which we use to work out the unknown genotypes of individual organisms. So for example, if we have a green pea pod, we might want to work out what its genotype is. 
So for example, if a pea pod has a green phenotype, it could have one of two genetic makeups. It might have a homozygous dominant genotype, which would be two large Gs, or a heterozygous genotype, large G, little g. So because it's green, we have no idea if it would be large G, little g, or large G, large G. We can't tell which one it is because both of them would result in the green color because it needs only one dominant allele. The test cross allows us to work out which of these genotypes the green pea pod has. In the test cross, the green pea pod with the unknown genotype is theoretically crossed with a homozygous recessive yellow pea pod, which has a little g, little g genotype. So here we have our genotype of our green pea pod, which is going to be large g, but we don't know what the second one is because we don't know if it's another large g or a little one. We then mate to this with a homozygous recessive yellow pea pod, which we know is little g, little g. If all of the offspring from this test cross have a green phenotype, then we can look back and know that the unknown genotype was capital G, capital G. So the yellow one was little g, little g as its gametes. And we knew that the green one had a large g as its gamete, but we didn't know the second gamete. So every single offspring is going to have one of these little g's. We know that these two are going to have large g with them as well, but of course we don't know what these are. But what we do know is that if all four of the offspring turn out to be green, then these ones have to have large g, little g. If they have little g, they'd have turned out to be yellow. So because all of them would turn out to be green, we know that this one must be a large g. So that tells us the genotype of the original pea pod. On the other hand, if half of our offspring from this test cross have a yellow phenotype, we would then know that the unknown genotype was actually large g, little g. So in this case, if these two turned out to be yellow pea pods, they would have to have this genetic makeup, which means this gamete here would be little g. So now we know that this one would actually be large g, little g. So it's all about working backwards with the test cross. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revise smiley face, and together, let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.